¿Cobraste ya este mes? No, voy por cuotas y no tengo 30 mil dólares para una entrada de una fiesta de gala. Pero nosotros podemos compartir esto porque empecemos porque esta semana se viralizó dado los personajes que han acudido a esta fiesta, porque la fiesta tiene una mega difusión y por supuesto eh, significa cantidad de espacios, minutos en todas las redes actualmente. Lo hemos visto varias veces esta semana. Todas las galas del MET presentan un tema que no solo es de la exhibición anual, sino que también los invitados tienen que intentar vestirse con ese tema en mente. Este año el tema fue la historia de la moda americana. A Miss Bowles, editor general de Vogue Estados Unidos, nos cuenta todo lo que tenemos que saber para ser entendidos del tema. Since the beginning of time, or rather fashion, American clothing manufacturers were taking detailed notes on colors, cuts and trends from their European peers. That is, until World War II, when the occupation and subsequent blackout of Paris gave America no choice but to, well, start from sketch. And today, American fashion is setting the tone for a never-before-seen future. But how did we get here? I'm Hamish Bowles, international editor-at-large at American Vogue, and I'm here to tell you everything you need to know about the history of American fashion. Our story starts with Claire McArdle, the mother of American sportswear. Her five easy pieces were born out of the necessity to have easy, interchangeable items for life on the go. Quite a departure from the fussy and labour-intensive designs seen in Europe. McArdle envied the ease and pockets of men's clothing. In 1944, McArdle, along with designers Bonnie Cashin and a very young Anne Klein, were a design trio that shaped the foundation for American ready-to-wear. But that's not to say European couture didn't have a place on American soil. Several designers remained true to custom tailoring, such as Hollywood's Adrian, High Society's Mambouche, and Norel, the king of 7th Avenue, famed for his flapper-style silhouettes, mid-century chemise dresses, and of course, his iconic mermaid dress. And if the 1940s were the infancy of American sportswear, then the 50s and 60s were its adolescent years. And as with most teenagers, it was an era of growth, change, and a healthy amount of rebellion. Charles James was one such champion of innovation. His rigid structures and layered creations inspired contemporary designers like Christian Dior and future generations including Holston and later Zach Posen. To Charles James, we owe thanks for the wrap dress, down jackets, and 80s approved shoulder pads. Not to mention the first sports bra. Women on jogs across the globe, thank you for your service, Charles. Leather goods and accessories too, sprinted into the limelight in the 1960s. Bonnie Cashin created the wildly popular shopping bag tote as Coach's first designer. You can still find her iconic turn locks on Coach bags today inspired by the hardware that kept the top down on Bonnie's convertible. The late 1960s and 70s were a time of radical cultural rapture, and soon, fashion followed suit. American designers were still viewed as apprentices to the European masters, but that all changed after the Battle of Versailles, a fashion show and fundraiser held at the Palace of Versailles in 1973. And indeed, it was a showdown. Five French couturiers, Yves Saint Laurent, Pierre Cardin, Emmanuel Ungaro, Dior's Marc Bohan, and Hubert de Givenchy, and five American ready-to-wear and sportswear designers, Oscar de Laurenta, Stephen Burrows, Halston, Bill Blass, and Anne Klein, fought a war of couture, duking it out to see which nation could produce the most impactful modern fashion. The show was a defining moment for inclusivity in American fashion with 10 black supermodels shattering notions of what to wear and who can wear it. And they didn't just walk, they literally vogued down the runway. Even Liza Minnelli was there. These designers came to Paris with one mission, to prove American fashion wasn't going anywhere except the future. As the fashion world rolled into the 1980s, three American designers were on everyone's minds and department store receipts. Donna Karen, for her Seven Easy Pieces collection that paid homage to McArdle, Calvin Klein for his trademark minimalism and fragrance obsession, and his gender-neutral underwear. 
not to mention those iconic black and white ads. And of course, Ralph Lauren for his hyper-American sensibility and his polo sports line. Minimalism was the word of the 1990s, and the Calvin Klein slip dress, amongst other pieces, was the answer. Utilitarian styles such as cargo pants and hoodies put American ready-to-wear brands like The Gap, Banana Republic and Eddie Bauer on the map. By the late 90s, several American designers had taken the reins of major American fashion houses and turned them into globally successful luxury brands. Marc Jacobs for Louis Vuitton, Tom Ford for Gucci and Narciso Rodriguez for Chiruti. They were also shaking things up within American brands. Marc Jacobs' Perry Ellis Punk Show in 1992 was so ahead of its time that it got Jacobs fired. Consumers, it appeared, could now dictate the trends that designers spotlighted in their collections. There is perhaps no greater example of an American designer's fast pass to Paris than Virgil Abloh, who debuted his Louis Vuitton menswear line in 2018. From ironic, hype beast favoured brand Off White to major Parisian fashion house, Abloh gave credence to the phrase, out with the old and in with the new. That new, of course, was American streetwear. Brands like Gypsy Sport and Telfar too, owned by Liberian-American designer Telfar Clemens, have kept high fashion on its toes and in its highest heels. Now, American designers are making their own rules and in turn influencing global fashion. Their innovation has proved once and for all that elegance need not be sacrificed in the name of comfort, simplicity and, of course, a high standard for values. And this blazing trail forward is just the beginning. For now, we can thank the American designers, models and organisations who wanted more from global fashion than just the status quo. The sheer unpredictability of where they'll go next might be the whole point.